Michael Jackson's Thriller Album. Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller, and a and veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. I'm Anthony Marinelli with my longtime close friend and co-host, Stephen Ray, bringing you the real stories directly from the talented people in the room with us during the making of Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. Oh, oh wow. you yeah. know what I mean? Well, something like that. And then you do some kind of fill. Uh, can you play can, that, can you, Are you ready, Chris? A thriller. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, so I want to say something. Chorus. Be, because it's those nuances that you created. No, that's that's all right. But that not, part the, right there, not, that's, the, that's, fill, no, not, not the, the fill. No, not the fill, though. Not really? the fill. We I remember Rod's was... demos, little things he would come over with a cassette. Yeah. Not that. The well, stuff you were doing. Did you play on Starlight? I don't think I did. You never heard Starlight? And, well, I heard it, but I don't think... I think that was him. I think that was uh, his demo. I, I don't remember playing on that demo. So you think Rod played it all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, being yeah. a keyboard player. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I just want you to understand that the, the actual parts, even like that, that was, that's a part. That's that's something that came from Rod. There are certain things I did, you know, uh, that, that you know, I, I embellished parts and I did certain fills. Yes. You know, like, you know, with the bass line, you know. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, you know, I did that stuff, but f- specific uh, lines like this. That's right. So, the wow. Yeah. It's it just goes in because there's there. so much stuff going on. Uh, you know? Yeah. But he, he didn't. Okay, that's another thing. They didn't always do the, the verse or the chorus the same each time. Like if you, as you listen to the song, right? Right, Stephen? Right? It's because it's live. Because you got real players doing their thing. But then orchestrationally, yeah. too. Right. There's different things that occur later. Like this sound doesn't happen in the first chorus, if I remember correctly. Oh, I see what you're saying. That, yeah, that no. be right here? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the bass or this? No, one? on this part. On no, that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. I mean, it's for me approaching it. It's the difference between doing this and and bending up to it. You know, to get more of a cry out of it. But you know, that's that was my approach. I mean, but the part is essentially the part. You know, but I went. But that's more, but see, that's, that's going to, but, but subconsciously, that's going to affect a dancer. Those scenes, those little nuances mm-hmm. that, that, yeah. that Michael knew, what would affect the person on the dance mm-hmm. floor? Do you mind doing it again? Yeah. One, two, three, four, one. See? As opposed to this. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, Let me see? do this. Okay. Let me do this. And you can get it in your yeah, time. Yeah. We're at. You know, as opposed to <laughs> See, yeah. that doesn't make you move as much. You can't even do it. <laughs> well, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so much stiffer. And but that's what I'm saying. More sterile. And this is uh, just uh, got a little more, uh, a little more sauce on it. See, Greg, look at me. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. 
Michael's a dancer. So he's gonna feel that. To this, uh, it's not the same. No, you don't. It doesn't make you. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make you do that. You don't feel that. But. That would have been really dope in the dance and long version what Greg's doing right now. Go for it, Greg. What you were just doing. A lot of times you use short articulations. Like even on this bass line, it's like bop, bop. Mm -hmm. And in this line, the way you're articulating the lower part of it, it just clears room in, against the drums. Mm -hmm. And then you like leave a space where the snare will hit or the claps mm -hmm. will happen or a shaker will happen. And it's like orchestration again. Even mm -hmm. though it's pop music, mm -hmm. it's there. It it's all the matters. Sense. It, all, it, it all matters. It does. Yeah. And it leaves vocal room for, for Michael. Yeah. There's a lot of room for him to add for him to add it in his <laughs> oh, yeah. all the little exactly. percussion things he would do vocally. Yeah. You know? Those little delicate yeah. things can find space. Yes, yes. And that's the beauty of the precision of this because, uh, despite the you know the, the huge amount of parts, you know the layering, there was all space. You know, again, it goes back to that uh, that. Uh, Interweaving, you know, and how it all worked. Uh, it's pretty yeah. fascinating. The construction of the song yeah. is there, and then, you know, you can orchestrate it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. Probably could be orchestrated different ways, but this this particular way was was uh, came from the songwriter. I guess that's what we're, we're kind of realizing. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't that's why he was. Yeah, that's that why he was the, all the way up. Yeah, that, that range. That's what Quincy loved about him. Yeah. You know, because he understood. You know, he realized Rod understood that the the importance of that range, you know, and he had the capability to, you know, uh, you know, define parts that covered the the complete range. Yeah, it gives you the full range, but the full, still, yeah. there's still room 
for that thickness, like that vocal stack. Yeah. There's a lot of vocal stack. Oh in that yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And it it works all around it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to ask, uh, Gre Greg. You know, being that you are so prolific and played on a lot of sessions, um, it it seems as though on Thriller, your connection and relationship and closeness uh, with Anthony did that exist on any other production in terms of programmer player programmer relationship it just seems like it just seems well, like it, we it, were fa it was a really family kind of environment well i mean it developed from just the sheer number of hours we were staring at each other <laughs> going okay what well, now you know and uh that environment was made possible because of quincy i mean he made everything a family environment so if if you were in the same room with quincy and another guy you didn't know that just made you part of the family you just because you assumed that he's supposed to be there so when i first met tony he was like hey how you doing i know yeah, you know <laughs> that's so how it was with everybody there when i yeah. Yeah. walked in yeah yeah but with you because you play keyboards that was really like something for me to just because i i knew about you beforehand and then it was such a great learning experience. <laughs> just how you handled, you know, because I was still learning how to handle professional situations. Mm -hmm. You know, I was 23 at the max, right around there. So I learned a lot. I got a lot out of it because it's like you can read a book and it would take me like 20 years to learn what I learned <laughs> in those two weeks. <laughs> Some things, so, yeah. like those yeah. bits that are like invaluable for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, how you take direction and how you were very careful because I noticed you were always very thoughtful when you'd get direction because hmm. you were thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like nervous because, you know, I, I could be nervous or something and I would just try to react too quickly. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that. Like hmm. ah. you never know. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts, Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at stories in the room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at stories in the room. For the latest news and links, visit the website storiesintheroom.com. This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf, recorded by Autovita Studios. Additional recording by Ben Rackless. Edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger. Music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's doing